Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel outside the target demographic. Today you're going to notice I have a little bit more than 8.6 ounces of ground clearance and that's because we're going to be changing the oil and the differentials. Let's get started. So I just took the car for a drive around the block. We have a few odds and ends I'm sure I'll be adding to it. Uh, paper towels, definitely a must. Big catch pan, my understanding is, for some reason, Subaru likes to do this with the oil change the oil drain plug is at a 45 degree angle. So as the oil pees, it'll hit here. And then as the stream gets weaker and weaker before it shakes to get the rest of it out, it's just dribbling straight down. I, I don't know why they do that. So same thing with this differential, it's gonna blow directly out at a 90 degree angle. And then as it starts dripping, uh, the trajectory changes, uh, unfortunate, but that's what we have. So. I have a couple of 75W90 gear oil, full synthetic. I have some tubes if I need them. Uh, I have seven of these containers. I feel like it's gonna be easy enough to just pop and pour, but depending on how much clearance I do or don't have, I have some hoses as well, and I can just squeeze the bottle and uh, put the hose inside the diff. Should be 0.8. Uh, liters. <laughs> Thanks, vehicles. I believe, um, or is it 800 milliliters, 0.8 quarts, something like that. So should essentially take one container per is my understanding, but uh, we'll double check that before, before we get started. And um, let's go ahead and get under there with a flashlight. So a tip for the video, I have the front wheels on ramps. I have a trailer hitch on the car, which helps. So I just jacked up on the hitch. I have the um, stand there just in case. And it gets me pretty close. It is a little nose tall. Um, I suppose I could put a two by four here, but I'm not super concerned about it. The tip for the video is this is a dollar at Dollar Tree. It's a headlamp, comes with the strap that uh, you'll see I got rid of, but I did put a neodymium magnet on it. So you have high, medium, and strobe, which I never understand why they put strobe on there. But by putting a magnet on it, you get a pretty decent spotlight, especially hands-free underneath the vehicle, hypothetically, but also in reality with this video. And there's the release right here. And what I've done is I've added a little bit of super glue to those hinges. So now I can actually angle the light at whatever angle I need to, because the super glue is going to hold those hinges in place. So I have a hands-free, fully adjustable, articulated, high and low floodlight for when I'm underneath the car or working under the hood or what have you for $1.25. They have it in black, red, and yellow, question mark. So I went with black. Um, if you get it in a higher viz color, you're less likely to leave it under there. But uh, very nice for the price, especially with the magnet and hinge mod, uh, which is going to help me out today. So let's go ahead and get started on the rear differential. Wooly bully is good luck. So the rear diff is accessible at the rear, who'd have thought. I just climbed under the center of the car to get to the front of it and Turns out that's not the case. So it's those two right there. Uh, I think I bought a Torque 70, something like that. Maybe it's for the front one. This one, I'm hoping to just be able to put a half inch drive into it. The trick for the video and the trick for you is uh, use some penetrating oil if you need to, but you want to make sure you open the fill, that one, the top one first. That way, if it doesn't open, you know not to drain it because then you're going to be differential fluidless and you won't be able to drive to go get differential fluid. So uh, pop the top first, use penetrating oil if you need to. Uh, mine's pretty rusty and corroded because rust belt, I feel like I've mentioned that before, but uh, seems simple enough to get to. I feel like this is gonna be a lot easier than I originally thought. If we zoom out, I have my, uh, partial spare here 
and that's a lot of clearance I can actually lay on my left shoulder, hypothetically, but also in reality, and my right shoulder will not even be contacting that roof. So I have plenty of space to get up in there. Uh, again, with my handy dandy flashlight, the muffler is going to be hot, but it will magnetize to the muffler. So I can just aim that right at my, oh God, look at how beautiful that is. Just aim that right at my differential. And now I have a free set of hands until my boy, who you can hear in the background, will become the official flashlight holder later on in life. But uh, I'm all freed up. Let's go ahead and get the catch pan and get started on this. Good news and bad news. Good news, half inch drive. So my uh, torque wrench will both be able to get this off and more importantly, be able to torque it back on. The bad news is uh, you don't have a lot of throw underneath the Subaru or any vehicle, even with it lifted as it were. So we're going to resort to the path of least resistance. Add a little bit of penetrating oil. There's quite a bit of corrosion more than rust. And uh, I am not the original owner of this guy, so I don't know when or if this diff haha, has been done. So we're gonna hit it. While we're waiting, we're gonna hit the front as well. And um, it is uh, coming up on eight o'clock at night. I feel like the sun isn't working with me here, but the penetrating oil is. So I'm going to hit the front. If I can get to it tonight, shiny. If I can't, that's what tomorrow's for. So um, that's where we are. Uh, maybe you have more torque, leverage, throw than I do. But um, at this point, we're going to let the penetrating oil do its work on both the diffs. We'll try again and see what we got. So I was able to get that started and you can see some calcifications or something coming off of it. So uh, I doubt the penetrating oil made a difference. It was on there for 12 seconds in between cuts, but this is working. Again, we're gonna start with the top one and then do the bottom one. So the cork has popped. I am happy to announce the fluid seems relatively clear. I'm not sure, um, one, what color it should be, and two, if color is such the strong indicator. Um, this is cheap insurance as far as I'm concerned. I just broke 75,000 miles on it. I don't know when it was done, so I am going to do it. Definitely has a smell. Um, does have a color, but that color is not brown or black or dirty, says I, uh, ignorant I. So, so far I'm not seeing any shards or debris any more than was um, holding it in place with the rust welding. So the top one was done. Let's go ahead and pop the bottom one as well. The trick here is unthreaded enough for it to start leaking and you won't have to chase the P stream starting here and then deflating as uh, it gets emptier. So. We're just gonna let that dribble out. So far, it's got a bit of a honey color. Um, it's an observation, an ignorant one. I don't know if that's good or a bad or indifferent, in but it does have a bit of a yellower tint to it than the other oil I deal with, which is engine oil. Um, to be fair, it is at a uh, thinner strand, so maybe that's why it's collecting colors. I, I don't know, I'm rambling. So we're gonna go ahead and let this one drain, controlled. And I'm going to spray the PB blaster onto the front diff and get that prepared for us. So both were pulled, both were drained. The bottom one is going to have this uh, magnetized plug here. And it has a little bit of silvery on it, but nothing like large particles, which according to the internet is acceptable. We're going to clean these both off. Again, the one with the nub is on the bottom. The flat is at the top, so we're going to put the bottom one back in after we clean it. And then according to the um, whatcha thing document, we're going to plug this one and continue to add oil to the top one until it leaks out. And then um, do that for the front as well. 
which between losing the sun and uh, apparently there's pans that need to be removed. I was not anticipating that. Um, that will be a tomorrow thing, but I'll at least know how it's done and uh, be all the easier tomorrow. So let's clean this guy up and plug it back up. Between cleaning the butt plug, I mean bottom plug, and the uh, threads for both the top and bottom, we have quite a bit of grease and dirt and stuff. So as I've said before, and I'll continue to say apparently, if what you've done has resulted in a dirty rag, then you are not wasting your time. So uh, definitely gonna be cleaner than it was. Let's go ahead and put this back together before the sun goes away. Ah. According to the internet, 36.2 foot pounds for both the top and bottom. So let's torque it and then fill it. So we're torqued and cleaned, wiped up the residual oil so that I have a positive positive for when this oil starts overflowing. Pro tip for the video, what this oil doesn't have is a cut lid, which I found out after being buried under the car. So carry a knife with you or, um, you know, be smart and cut that beforehand. I guess you really wouldn't want that cut or it's going to leak all over the sales floor if it falls off the shelf or something. So now that's cut, let's go ahead and just start spraying it in there. Due to the cross sway bar, I, I don't freaking know, uh, pouring it in doesn't work with the shape of this bottle. So I have this uh, tubing. Now I can have this guy upside down. And as I start squeezing, I'll probably notice right there, there's an oil bubble. Beautiful. Now you're going to lose a little bit of... Uh, capacity of volume by filling up that hose first right so I'm not putting a hundred milliliters straight in I'm using 150 to move a hundred right because of the volume of the hose so keep that in mind but um, does work pretty well as soon as you see it start overflowing you can just let off and the oil will suck its way back out and you'll be good to go so uh, the second, I guess, third, uh, who's keeping track, pro tip for the video. So the rear diff is completed. Um, I am out of sun, time, and swears. So, turns out, I should have figured, but when you're using a two, three foot long hose, that whole volume thing that I was talking about becomes a bit of an issue, especially since the lower that this bottle gets on its volume of oil, the uh, less is going to be able to push. So what I ended up doing is cut a much smaller hose, uh, probably six inches. <laughs> I'm more familiar with eight myself, but uh, I was able to thread this through here, get that in there. And with the recess here, I was able to have the bottle going left right from wheel to wheel with the hose going uh, nose to butt of the car and was able to fill it up substantially faster, like 10, 15 times faster than the ridiculously long hose and squeezing all the way down here on the ground. So pro, 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 pro tip for you guys. I feel like there's been a couple in this video. Learn from my mistakes as I have learned from them. As well. So this one is good. Uh, use some rubbing alcohol to help break down the uh, leaked fluid, the overflow. Wiped it up pretty good. At this point, another pro tip, I have a dry spot. Now I wonder if it'll be that way in the morning. So I'm going to leave a unused paper towel right here. I'm sure it'll blow away, so I'm going to put rocks down. But if that paper towel in the morning, you know, uh, 10, 12 hours later, doesn't have any drops of oil on it, I know that this is tight enough and um, is torqued and the O-ring isn't broken and anything like that. So uh, let's go ahead and be done for the night and we will come back tomorrow for the front.
All right, second day, second part. There is a plastic tray right here that looks exactly like this. There's, I believe, five bolts that hold it in place, and then there are three of the uh, pry plastic pieces, and I'll roll in a video a little bit about that. Um, once this comes off, mine is full of debris and gravel and stuff, which rattles and uh, makes the car louder, which is a project I am literally actively in the middle of, where I am literally actively trying to make the car quieter. So go to shake all that stuff out. Do make sure that you put it in your yard. That way the lawnmower can pick it up and shatter a window. Um, with that said, this is a manual transmission. So there is a drain plug on the bottom, which is going to be both for your uh, front differential and the manual transmission. They share the same fluid apparently. And the fill port is going to be the dipstick reading port on the top which is um, not super conducive to this, but let's go ahead and get started. So it turns out this big plastic pan, so you have one, two, three, this third one, uh, I think there's like five, six bolts, and then there's one, two uh, friction holders. I don't know what these are called, but the same tool that I've been using to get the uh, body panels off to do the sound deadening. You know what? We're going to leave that one there. I'm going to go after this one. A screwdriver, flathead, would work fine. I have this, so I will use this. And now the pan should rock off the place and it's being held in place this is the driver's side up here uh, uh where am i up here there's going to be another one of those clicky drivers am i even showing it probably not okay here that's the one so you have three of these guys and I think five bolts. Kind of a pain, but I guess it's good in that, you know, it's not going anywhere unless you intend it to. So let's get this guy out of the way. So this is actually pretty nice in that I wasn't able to get too much of the firewall you can see here. I have a little bit of the 10 millimeter foam on the firewall I could get to. This side with the brake booster and steering and all was very much in the way. Now that I'm under here, I can get at all this surface with the spray coating stuff, including here, this is the heat shield, but behind it, yeah, so we're deadening that. Um, behind it is an air channel that I may be able to get some spray or at least some deadening material in there. So, um, that's going to make that whole process quite a bit easier, which is fantastic. Um, with that said, should be on this side. We have... Let me get my bearings here. I was told... Okay, so right here is our drain. All right, so before we go under, you're going to need a T70 Torx. I have it on a half-inch drive for my breaker bar and my torque wrench. We're going to drain the fluid first. We're going to put a catch pan underneath it as well, and then we can start filling it from the top. So again, transmission. The only T70 down here, from what I can tell. So we're going to attempt to break this free, drain it all out, and fill it from the top. I believe it's a 3.5 liter quart. They're pretty similar capacity. So we're going to put three in, install the dipstick, confirm if we need to add more, and then uh, be a little more cautious with the remaining half liter versus the uh, three that we can just pour straight in. So let's go ahead and break this guy free and let it do its thing. This fluid is little bit darker, more brownish, blackish than the um, 
yellow that came out the rear one. So, uh, I guess my tip so far would be don't have your splash pad, I mean catch pan, quite so low. It's going to splatter regardless. I wadded up these uh, already used rags, put it right there. So they absorbed a little bit of the blast and then um, I was able to move them out of the way to allow it to drain. But you're going to get some splatter everywhere, so anticipate that. Go ahead and let it drain and then we'll keep moving on. So in the time it took me to get the laundry, bring it outside and hang it, we are still draining. So that's good. And now that I took the time to climb back under here, what I'm going to do is use some rubbing alcohol. I'm going to wipe this area down. I'm going to try spraying some of my noise deadener. The two biggest, well, three biggest uh, sources of noise in my cabin so far are the engine and transmission. I can definitely hear them at higher RPMs. At lower ones, it's actually stunningly quiet. Uh, so much so that sometimes I feel like I've stalled when I came to a red light, which is pretty great. The second source is, um, being this is a base model Subaru, the uh, HVAC system only has four fan settings. One is useless, two is just better than useless. Three is the one I use most often because four is, it's like 80 decibels. It's ridiculously loud. So not sure what I'm going to be doing with that. And the third source of sound in my car is of course the two toddlers. So can't really do anything about the third one. I'm sure they'll grow out of it. Uh, the other ones I can try addressing here. So I'm going to try spraying this down a little bit. As I said, we're going to clean it up. We also have a little bit and honestly a little bit of rust considering this is almost a coming up on six year old car so what i'm going to do is i have a bristle brush we're going to scrub this down a little bit and then white silicone spray sorry white lithium grease that's the one i'm going to get a rag uh sprayed in it and i'm going to wipe down all the surfaces i can and that's going to help uh freeze the rust that I have and prevent any more rust from forming. But honestly, I'm surprised at how little rust is under here. Uh, reminder, I feel like I've mentioned it before. I am in Ohio. I am in the rust belt, hence rusting. So I'm not concerned with it, but I do want to uh, start mitigating it and doing what I can, especially since I'm already on my back talking to a phone. So let's get started on that. With a rag in the... Uh, white lithium grease it actually um it shined up the black pretty nice and even the red rust is now um not red so would recommend it took maybe five minutes and uh it counts as arm day because the angles aren't great up here but uh i would say it's already made a noticeable difference these i did not do versus that i did so just in the color, you can tell that uh, this is starting to act as a barrier to keep the moisture away. And uh, as long as it felt, I'm still draining. It's the damnedest thing. At this point, I don't know that I care. There's going to be some residual in there. But uh, I do have a couple minutes. I'm going to go ahead and spray the sound deadener in here. And uh, I'm going to see how much of a difference that makes. I'm very satisfied. So I was able to spray along most of the engine bay with the sound deadener spray and a little bit under along the transmission tunnel that runs the whole length of the car. So that's going to be quieter. And then I put some uh, deadening mat on this symbol and it's made it quite a bit quieter. So uh, th this is gonna be a good day. I'm gonna have a quieter maintained car with less rust, less noise, and damn it, you're still dripping. All right, I don't care. We're gonna seal it up. Let's do it. Upon trying to put this in, there is a magnet that will collect up some debris. Um, I don't see any large shavings or anything. It's just some squishy goo. So wipe this off and put it back in. So we have our before. 
and the after. Just a paper towel, nothing special. Let's go ahead and seat that in there. I am happy to announce that this oil is not hot. I guess it wouldn't be 20 minutes later. Uh, legit, probably 20 minutes, and it was still dripping at that rate. So I'm going to get it as started by hand as I can. I'm less likely to dork the threads that way. And then we're going to seat it to, I believe it's 36 foot pounds of torque. So it is 36 foot pounds. Torque that back down, rubbing alcohol to clean it up a little bit. Paper towel, uh, clean up on your way out. The next thing we have to do is put the tray on. I'm not going to bore you guys with the details of that. You got it off, you'll be able to get it back on. And then I'll see you guys back up top side. The tray is back on. The riding made in Japan Subaru goes towards the front of your car. Um, you won't be able to connect it the other way, I'm sure. So spray a few things on your way out with that white lithium grease. Let it start working, breaking uh, that stuff up and sealing off the rust from the air, preventing it from oxidizing and being oxidized rust. That's going to help uh, with the rusting issue. So that's what we got. Let's go up top side. From the passenger side, this took me a while to locate and I've already pulled out the stick right here is your dipstick so i'm going to push that back into place not the most ergonomic design but you have a big old wiring harness here and underneath it you have the dipstick so looking from the side you'll never see it they made it gray, the same color as the transmission, which is just genius. And then uh, this giant wiring harness is in the way. So I find if you just reach in there with a hooked finger and try and hook onto something, you'll be able to pull the dipstick out. Um, it is showing some stuff, which means I haven't wiped it yet. So we're gonna wipe this off. We're gonna be using a funnel with a tube and um, we're gonna pour three containers in and then we're gonna be a little bit more diligent with the remaining half container. So let's get started on that. Go ahead and collect up all the pieces, parts, tools, accessories that you've used. Do a couple push-ups. look underneath your car, make sure that you didn't leave anything that you weren't supposed to. So checking the level of the transmission fluid when the car is not level is not uh, conducive to checking the level. So we do not want to start the engine. We're going to go ahead and roll it back. Uh, since this is a manual transmission, that's something I can do easily. I'm not sure how autos would do. But uh, anywho, we're going to go ahead and roll this backwards, uh, make sure it's on relatively level ground, and then we can go ahead and start adding the fluid. You'll recall for the rear differential, I cut the included um, uh, nozzle cap, lid, whatever you would call this. So I just put it back on this guy and um, just by gravity, it's flowing enough where if I squeeze it, you can see the level comes up and it doesn't drain super quick. So I can just set this once that level goes down. I could just set this right in the funnel and it will chug and glug. I have a little sight glass right there. So I can go do other things while this is safely auto feeding. And uh, once it's empty, I know to just go ahead and switch out, bloop, switch out to the next container. I could connect this directly to the hose and squeeze it in bypassing the funnel um, what I found yesterday when I tried doing that with the rear differential is you have to squeeze this to apply pressure, right? That's the whole concept. That pressure blew the hose off and I sprayed probably, you know, 50 milliliter or something like that. So not really sure what the best way to go about this is. I'm really in no hurry. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and let this glug and chug and we're going to put three in and then be a little bit more cautious with the uh, remaining amount that needs to be added. We are 
three quarts in, it should be a 3.5 or 3.7 quart capacity for the life of me. I cannot find it on the internet. So we're gonna be uh, slow and diligent here. The last oil was put in. I'm going to attempt to not make a mess with this, which I'm sure will end the way I want it to. I'm a realist. So that's just on top of the port. I'm going to go ahead and line this up, get the dipstick in. Um, I'll show you the trick I used for that. Boy, they just give you like no clearance. You can disconnect that electrical uh, wiring harness, I assume, but I'm going to try not to. So we put that in place, and when I pull it, it's actually showing. Will you not focus? It's showing over the full line. So I'm going to let that sit for a bit. What I'm assuming is this guy just finished draining, and there's still some of it in the uh, port. So. That would be pretty nice if that were the case. But what I did, I'm trying to blind get this into a hole, right? So instead of holding it back eight inches, haha, if you go like this and have the tip of your finger over the top, you can feel for where that hole is and then inject the dipstick into place. Um, you know, honestly, Ignorant me for as little as I know. Um, that is just, that is just really crappy engineering right there. So how often do you check your uh, transmission stick? I will say I checked mine once before deciding to change it. So it's not a, a common use item, but all they had to do was move that thing an inch to the rear. Um, everything else in here I've celebrated for how easy it is to get to and the ease of maintenance and accessibility and all. This is just um, poorly thought out. It's right down there. So you got this big old metal arm in the way, which is also sharp, by the way, ask me how I know, and this chunky wiring harness. You could disconnect that. I imagine you could take your air intake off. I don't know how much that would help. So it's easier just to uh, reach underneath. It is easier, not easy. Um, distinction with the difference there but we're gonna let this sit for a bit five ten minutes and we'll check it again at that point uh, it's easy enough to refill it's a pain to drain so what I can do is take the doggo for a drive uh, 10 20 minutes something like that if it is indicating that it's full we'll go ahead and take it for a drive come back top it off if we need to at this point this is only taken three quarts, which is half a quart less than the lowest that the internet has said it would be. They said uh, 3.4, 3.5, 3.7 for a five-speed manual in 2018. Don't know that they made a five-speed manual in 2018. Mine is a six-speed, so are they wrong or am I wrong? Or uh, I just, for the life of me, I'm finding a lot of CVT data sheets. Um, continuously variable transmission, which I do not have, and for as long as I can, I will never own. Um, the wife's scooter, dear God, it's the wife's scooter, not mine, came in the marriage. That has a CVT, and uh, it's also 175 pounds. So when you have a CVT with a three, four, five thousand pound vehicle with a thousand pound trailer being towed, I, I don't. I don't know why we're heading that way is what I'm getting at. So I will uh, continue to upset the wife by owning manual transmission cars as long as I can, because at some point in the probably very near future, it will not be an option to me. So that's my diatribe. Um, every vehicle, three cars and six motorcycles have all been manual transmissions. I love it. It keeps you engaged. It gives you better controllability. It gives you better uh, speed and uh, torque and horsepower is my understanding compared to automatics. That may not be the case anymore, but that's fine. Um, I, I get bored with my right hand while driving if I don't have 
something to touch. Haha. -ha. So we're going to let this go ahead and drip the rest of the way and see what we have. So I'm draining the uh, differential and transmission fluid into this container. You can see it's actually quite dark. So uh, when it's in a stream or a strand coming out of the transmission with the light behind it and all, it could look a different color. I would imagine the, uh, as I said, as it was draining, the rear one seemed okay, less bad. Uh, the front one was very, very dark. This is almost um, engine oil kind of color. But uh, I would imagine the front one is going to have more wear and tear and um, debris and break down faster and all because it's a larger capacity. Uh... Thanks, car. Transmission with um, a lot more heat and uh, more difficult to dissipate that heat and running the wheels as well as being linked to the engine and having the gearbox and everything in there. So this is not uh, the front or the rear. This is the front and the rear, but definitely worth the time. I would say all in. Um, there is a lot of learning as we went. Uh, I'm sure that was obvious in the video. But uh, I would say this was maybe three hours to figure it all out and go get this part and that thing. And if I had to do it again, I imagine I could knock this out in maybe an hour, hour and a half. So just so you have a time frame, uh, this is an edited and cut down video. So I would say probably give yourself three hours on a weekend to get it done and you'll get it done before that and be able to clean up and all. But if you had to do it super quick and you had everything already ready already and you could actually find the capacities and the blah blah blahs online um i would say this is maybe an hour hour and a half job so let's get back to the car and see what the dipstick says with just three quarts in there i am not focusing i am just over the f line more on the letter F than uh, the line F. So I haven't ran it yet. What I'm gonna do now, uh, cause I don't like the uh, discrepancies in the numbers. Um, and again, I cannot find a, a positive number here. I'll let you guys know so you don't have to suffer as I did as much anyways. Um, I'm going to run the engine in place here in the driveway for maybe two, three minutes allow it to settle and go where it needs to go and um, see if it goes down any. So let's cut back now. So I ran the engine for two minutes. I uh, put it in reverse and drove backwards a bit, drove forward a bit, just stay here in the driveway, not too far. And uh, the reading is very much the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, rear differential remainder fluid with me. I think there's two, 300 milliliters left in it. I'm gonna take the doggo for a drive and uh, see if driving it around doesn't lower it. But at this point we're at three liters exactly, or sorry, three quarts, which is almost three liters exactly. And um, we're a little high if anything. So let's go for a drive, see what we got. All right, so the oil should be cool. The tortoise is outside. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we're still reading high. Ooh. All right. So what I'm going to do is wipe it again. We're going to place it again. But before I do, um, tip for the video, if you have a watch and you need to hold something small, put it in your watch. What I'm going to do is route this zip tie through this hook, and I'm now going to have a much bigger hook to be able to pull on, and it'll give me something a little bit more pronounced as I'm fondling my engine, hot engine, blindly. Now I have something that I'll be able to uh, either locate the actual dipstick or still be able to pull out the dipstick 
by that zip tie. So let's go ahead and put it back in and see what we got. And wouldn't you know, we are still not focusing and still reading too high. So we have a solution to that. So I have a hand pump for gas oil air, apparently. Uh, it's been sealed up for the last couple years. Been begging for a use for it and now we have one. Uh, apparently you move this piston back and forth. This one blew my thumb off. This one sucked my thumb on. So this is the suction. That one's the release. And uh, we're gonna see if we can't pull a little bit out. We'll be able to track with the sight glass here how much we did pull and um, if we need to put some back we already know how to do that process so let's get started so i pulled about 250 milliliters and let's try the dipstick really liking the zip tie idea by the way if i do say so myself so Put that back in, pull that back out, and we have a false positive. So let me wipe it and try it again. So attempt number two. I feel like the other video I watched where you filled it until it overflowed was the better way to go. Um, not sure why this one isn't set up that way hey bow right at the fill line so all right uh that puts us at 2.8 quarts um that'll be well let's see that's not really fair eight ounces so three quarts minus eight ounces is something who knows? Uh, the easier way would be to go the metric route, unfortunately. So that's going to be probably at uh, 1.9 liters, 1.8, and then slowly start uh, putting the dipstick in and confirming at that point. I am going to keep this container with me, drive it for a week or so, top it off if I need to. But that appears to be it. We're good to go there. And again, uh, I'm loving it. You got this little black zip tie here. It's just dangling. Nice and visual, easy to get to. It's not going to, um, I want to get one of those red pull before flight kind of things, but I figured it would rattle around and break something free or, you know, catch on fire. So having this here gives you a nice little lead that you follow to get back to your dipstick. I am satisfied with that as well as the, uh, the oil in there. So I will say on the drive, I did eh, maybe 15 miles. It did appear to be quieter. I was having some uh, shifting issues, which because I was super uh, aware of that, because I was looking for that, um, I think registered a little more on my radar than uh, it would have if I didn't know I was doing an oil change. I would sooner blame the fact that I was in sandals than uh, socked shoes like I usually am, but uh, it's summer and I, I ain't doing that. So uh, honestly, the other reason it was probably quieter was the fact that I had sound deadened and you could see a little bit of spray here and not too much else, honestly. So I feel like I did a good job there. Give me a good job in the comments below if you would. Um, it is much better. The oil based on the color and smell definitely needed to be changed. So I'm glad I took the time and learned how to do this. Uh, from what I saw online, it would be about four, 450 in uh, cost to have a dealership do it or take it to a mechanic and have to drop it off and not have a car and blah, 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 blah. So uh, I didn't have to schedule this. I just went out into the driveway and did it again, maybe an hour and a half, maybe an hour after you have watched this video and you weren't doing the uh, sound deadening spray and cleaning underneath with rust and all that. So call it an hour and a half, two hours max, and uh, that'll get you out of the house and saving yourself some money and learning a little bit about how your car works as I did. Oh man, finally getting a breeze. Probably going to take the dog for another drive. Uh, that was good. Haven't been able to do that for a while. So that seems to be about it. Um, I will put in the pinned comments 
the uh, fact that it took about one quart for the rear diff, just shy of three quarts for the front. So you're only in four quarts. And I think I spent 75 on seven quarts because again, the internet was giving me bad info. So about $10 a quart, you're in 40 bucks and you saved yourself $400 in doing it yourself. So not a bad return on investment. And uh, we learned a thing, you and I. So this is kind of fun. This is the unused oil. And if it would focus, you can see it's got kind of a yellowish, a honey kind of a color to it. This is about no more than 20 miles on the clock. This is what I just pulled out with the siphon pump and it is quite a bit darker. So seems like it uh, works pretty quick. What I'm gonna do is not pour this one into this one. I'm just gonna use this as my top off one. I'm gonna carry this in the car with me. This one I'm gonna keep as good oil, and I feel like between my wife's scooter and my sport touring bike, that um, one of them is probably gonna need that for the uh, gears in the uh, gearbox there. So we'll just keep this one as good. These two are empty, but the shape is different than the squared off typical quartz. So if this one is more conducive, which I feel like it might be for the wife's Chevy, um, you know, for being less powerful, it's funny how there's less room in a larger engine bay for her. But um, if there's a place that you can slide that into, you can uh, let this drip dry as best as it will, fill it up with your standard engine oil, and now you can keep, uh, you know, change your label, of course, and uh, you can keep that inside your engine bay or in your trunk or wherever will remind you and allow you to have access to this. And you're able to top off your oil when you absolutely definitely check it during your gas ups at a gas station, right? That's what everyone. So here we are the next day, drove to work, checked the dipstick. Naturally it's low. Ha. I conferred with a couple people online and did some research. It should be 3.5 quarts or about 3.4 liters, I think. Um, if we check it now, we're, we have a false positive because I didn't wipe it first. So um, I've said in another video, I'm showing you now, on my oil dipstick, I have a wadded up rag. No, it will not catch fire. No, it will not get sucked into the serpentine belt. No, I'm not concerned about it. Yes, you can steal it if you'd like to but it gives you a way to check your oil and your transmission fluid, apparently. So we're gonna pull it again. And we are reading at just about full. Awesome. So you can see right here, uh, let me attempt to get this back in there. Do, do, do. I have mastered the art of getting this back in there. Of course, now that I've put that into the air, I won't be able to get it lined up. Eat it. All right, so there's that. Uh, I keep the new-ish. This is the stuff I sucked out and is a little bit darker than the new stuff. So it fits quite nicely right here. It's well away from the engine. The bottle doesn't even get hot. Yes, I've checked. Um, the bottle cannot rattle and fall anywhere, so it works for my purposes. I'll just keep checking this and topping it up if I need to. I recommend you do the same. So, uh, internet said 3.5 uh, quarts. I put just shy of three quarts in there. It's odd, but um, the, it is a manual transmission versus an automatic and CVT. I can find information all day long on those. This is a uh, data point of one, I suppose, but it doesn't matter what the internet says, it matters what the dipstick says, and the dipstick is telling me that I am essentially full. So keep it with you, keep topping it off, um, as you should, even if you weren't the one to change the oil, right? Same thing with your uh, transmission oil or any other work that gets done. Uh, lug nuts, a lot of people just use a um, torque wrench or a uh, uh, pneumatic 
uh, gun or you know an electric drill or whatever and just zip it into place and call it good. Confirm that the foot torques, uh, the foot pounds of torque are correct. Carry a torque or a wrench with you. Uh, vibrations on the road, um, accelerating, decelerating, dynamic loading, all that stuff could rock some of your um, lug nuts free. So just do your general maintenance. It's a lot cheaper to have people ask questions about, oh, why are you using a torque wrench? Is your car broke? Nope. I'm doing my own maintenance and I'm making sure that it doesn't break and I can show you how to do it too. So that's what we got. Uh, I think we're pretty much squared away. I do have, I'll tell you, I do have a smell of 75W90. Um, this is nowhere near the engine, so it shouldn't get hot enough to make that smell. I'm pretty sure what happened is when I had the funnel with the tubing going in, a little bit of it leaked, right? You're going to have the residual along the walls. Uh, I've made you look. Along the walls of the tube, uh, it is going to leak. It is going to drip. That's what gravity does. That's what fluid does. So this won't evaporate. It's an oil, not water. And uh, I imagine it's just sitting somewhere on the engine. So that is something to be aware of, though. Listen for changes, smell for new smells, check underneath your car for any kind of leaks, uh, you know, puddles pulling up. Before I left today, I checked under the car. When I got to work, I checked the dipstick and it was reading um, a little low, uh, put a little bit more in there. The um, Before I left today, I checked under the car. So do your due diligence and everything should work out for you. So. As always, this is Outside the Target Demographic. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Any questions, comments, concerns you have, leave them in the comments section below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.